We all know that absolutely nothing is better than that initial reveal. That singular moment during the Nintendo Direct. That rapturous minute or so when we finally get this thing that we've been waiting so long for. There's no doubt that that's the best. But now we come to the second best part. Watching it over and over and over and over again and pouring over every little detail. And pretty early on, I decided I'm not going to do a frame by frame. Then I got thinking and I thought to myself, I'm going to do a frame by frame. And I can't stop me. So we're here with the trailer and uh, we're just going to kind of move through it slowly. I don't think that I really have anything uh, interesting to say, anything interesting to add to this discussion, any uh, analyses for you. Um, but who cares? I'm doing this frame by frame. <laughs> here we go. It's the Metroid Prime 4 trailer. It's, it's Metroid Prime 4 finally revealed. If anything, I just want this second best moment to last longer. Because the part that comes after this is the third best thing, which is actually, it goes back to being bad thing again. Waiting for the next thing. That's less fun. So I'm gonna enjoy, I'm gonna enjoy this moment. So we start with the black screen, masterful play, Retro Studios, someone give, or the person who edited this trailer a raise. Uh, and then, <laughs> oh, that darn text. Oh boy. Oh boy. And I, I, I do love how, uh, you know, Galactic Federation Research Facility, that's, that's really, could you ask for a better beginning place for a Metroid game? It's just, it's a place that's, it's just begging for trouble. It's just begging for space pirates to attack it. You just, I don't know, I don't know if any Galactic Federation research facility has lasted more than three or four days. You, you should just stop making them. <laughs> Skip past these initial, um, still very exciting, but slightly less exciting uh, black frames. Um, and then we, we get the uh, the grand entrance from uh, Samus's gunship, the one that you, uh, more or less the one you get in Prime 3. I haven't compared, so I, I know sometimes from game to game, she'll just like randomly soup up her ship again. So I don't know if there's any differences to this or not. Uh, some Somebody pointed out in the stream, a uh, very good point. This this port like right here in Prime 3, this comes down. You know, in most of the games she goes on top to get in and out of her ship. Uh, this one comes down because you actually get in and out of the ship in Prime 3. So they made it a little bit easier for you to just kind of walk up. Uh, but I like to think that Samus realized that that was a fatal design flaw. And then uh, after the events of 3, she had somebody um, fix this flaw and uh, make it so that she could enter and exit the ship from the top because Samus cannot do her job. She cannot properly do her job without a cool entrance. She has to be on the top of the ship so she can jump, do her big somersault, land with the three-point landing. It doesn't matter that people are dying. As we speak, every second matters. This, this research station is under attack. Does not matter. If you want Samus to get the job done, she needs to have the cool entrance. I mean, she even like did a little boost. The boost kicked on. Let's look at let's look at that again. Uh, it's it's not enough to just jump. She's got to engage her thrusters. She's got to get some air on this jump. Very very important. And uh, and let's at least pause for a moment to see all of the. Uh, I believe these are space pirate ships. Up in the air, space pirates up to no good. <laughs> Some real good, uh, good analysis here. So you need this, kaboom! The three-point landing, it is absolutely crucial to Samus's mission. And can I just say, Habawuba, golly gosh! Oh, it looks so cool. <laughs> it just like looks so amazing. I mean, 
the cutscenes in Prime Remastered. I, I don't know what they did. I don't know how they got it looking so good. And this is everything is good, if not better. Looks absolutely incredible. In fact, let's let's back up a second. Even just that ship is looking so, so good. Just the lighting on it. The the Samus's helmet-iness of it. It's just oh, it's it's just perfect. I mean, this whole shot, it's the even just with the original Prime. That opening shot of her coming up and jumping off the ship. I mean, that's why this is necessary. You need this. Absolutely crucial. Oh, when I... Gives me the... Gives me the goosebumps. So incredibly cool. Ooh! Every single darn shot. So good. Get out of here, ship. I don't need you at the moment. Go rest. Go have some lunch. Just everything looking so darn good, so incredible, and then just like classic, swinging around and turning into gameplay, going into her point of view. And now is where we get like the opening shots of the game, and and of course just immediately you get like the stuff flying around. You get this this thing here gets blown up. Ah, oh, the arm cannon enters the shot. She starts moving, and immediately. Come on, where is it? We're moving. Kaboom. So like immediately you've got this action happening and these these lighting effects going off. And I love it because like these early screenshots, this is the kind of stuff that like you, you see screenshots online and you're like, there's no way it looks this good. And let's address this right now. Like I know there's the whole like, is this actually running on Switch kind of thing? Um, It, it, it definitely is. I, I believe that it is. They're advertising it as a Switch game. Maybe there will be more later. Maybe it will be cross-gen. Maybe there will be performance patch or something. But at least at the moment, it is safe to assume what we are seeing is Switch footage. And all of the screenshots... Oh, of course it's raining. Of course it's raining. Because they're show-offs and they just have to make this opening stuff look so ridiculously good. Whenever you see these screenshots, they look like... Like, way too good. They almost look, like, cartoonishly good. It's just, like, so polished and beautiful and amazing and, like, seemingly way better than the Switch could even accomplish that it's just, it's, it's almost comical. How, how good. <laughs> just the, oh, the lighting and the reflections and everything. How good it all looks. And, of course, like, right here, YouTube encoding butchers it a little bit. You know, I, we're losing a little bit of resolution here. Uh, but... You can see it, and you know running on the actual, like, on the actual Switch, on your TV, it's gonna look so amazing. Just the, the composition of these shots, the lighting, all the bloom effects and stuff, it's like, it's, it's like, it's like comical. It's like funny when you see it paused, when you see these screenshots, just how, like, stupidly perfect and amazing it is. It looks like a proof of concept. It doesn't even look like real gameplay. And, uh, and so obviously we get a, we get, you know, this is the, the first look at gameplay of, uh, Metroid Prime 4. And, uh, this is kind of cool. You get, like, a little, like, mini-map, uh, of the terrain. But then up here you get the little enemy radar. Um, everything else is pretty standard. She's got missiles. That's about it. The HUD looks, looks very, very good. Um, we're treated to some very basic gameplay. They really don't reveal anything about the, uh, you know, about the gameplay or the mechanics or anything, and I, you know, you wouldn't expect as much from the first trailer. This is clearly just literally the opening moments of the game. This is the, the space station from the first game. This is just, you come in, you learn some really basic controls. You can see they uh, locked on there, so they're definitely, I mean, there was no question they were going to, but, like, they're definitely using the new controls introduced in Prime Remastered, where it's twin-stick controls, but then you still have a lock-on. They still wanted to, uh, you know, they didn't want to turn it into just a pure first-person shooter. They want the, the lock-on feature to be a thing. And I get it. That's that's kind of a part of uh, Metroid Prime's identity. That's what kind of, kind of makes it a little bit unique. I know not everyone is a big fan of the whole, like, lock-on and strafe kind of gameplay. I think it's pretty good, and I think there's more stuff they could do with it, and I hope they do more with it. Uh, but at the moment, I'm just going to, you know, whatever. It's, it's Metroid Prime gameplay. Space Pirate gets real good and blowed up. 
an explosion effect. Really nice. Love seeing all of the ridiculous stuff going on in the background. It's very cool. It's very exciting. All the space pirate ships. Kablam. Another good kabloomers right there. Oh, and another one. Second one. A one, two, three whammy of, uh, of kablammers. This right here is a bad guy ship. It seems, it seems, if you follow its movement, it seems to be zooming over here. And, and they seem to be shooting at it. That's, that's my, it's my analysis here. I could be wrong. Surely this will uh, make great use of HD rumble <laughs> when everything is all, uh, is all shaken. And then here's what you see now, shooting stuff. That's not really Metroid Prime. You want to get to the real stuff. The real Metroid Prime stuff. You know, you got this, uh, this pipe falls down here. Oh no, I, I've hit a dead end. We got to turn. We got to take another way. This is Metroid Prime right here. It's scanning. It, that, I mean, like, really nice little, cool little effect there while it's scanning. I, 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 I just, I can't even describe how important scanning is. And it's, it's silly. It's completely silly. But it's such a feel thing. You know, like, mechanically, it doesn't even really do that much. It does help you kind of, like, sleuth around, but, like, m for the most part, it just makes you feel cool. Scanning stuff in the environment and learning about it, and then also, like, that acts as a collectible in its own way, so that's cool. And, of course, you know, you scan, you feel like a detective. The computer's telling you that, like, oh, yeah, it's a space pirate, and he's, he's definitely gonna die. He's got organ failure. You gotta, I don't know, put a put a blanket over him or something. No, but seriously, like, it's just, uh, I, it's, it's so silly. But it's so immediately established in the very first game. You come in, you're scanning everything, and you're just, you're learning about it. You, you feel like a detective. And I'm just so happy to see that. I mean, it was never not going to. It's just, it's such a part of the series identity. And it should always be, because it just feels good. It just feels amazing. So that guy's dead. We're gonna just, we're not even gonna, I'm gonna, when I play, I'm gonna shoot him. I'm probably gonna shoot him. This person elected uh, not to. Uh, so, um, next exciting, exciting insight. Morph Ball confirmed. Morph Ball confirmed, indeed. Ooh, that's a nice little effect. Ooh, that's cool. I didn't notice that before. Let's go back. Let's do that again. Really cool little, like, a uh, little, little electric-y kind of... <laughs> Morph Ball effects always looked really good. She just always looked really good rolling around. I don't know. The lighting is always really fantastic in those segments. And then, uh, this leads me to one of my favorite parts of the trailer. Rolling through this pipe and watching the scene below. I think it's a very, it's a very clever thing. You know, uh, you can only roll so fast when you're in morph ball mode. You have this exact, this, this track, you have to follow the track. And so they get to kind of control the scene. You know, they, they, they get to kind of force you to kind of look at what's going on in the room below you. Oh yeah, and I guess in this case, I, it looks like they could go out of that hole. Maybe? I don't know. I'm not really sure. But I, I always love that. It feel, th this was kind of introduced in Prime 3. And it feels very cinematic, just making you go through rooms where you're moving through and you get to watch what's going on, but you don't get to interact. And it's kind of a very unique Samus kind of thing. Like, who else would have a reason to be rolling through a tube, you know? <laughs> Make Master Chief crawl through a duct and be forced to, like, watch the scene. But Samus is just like, why is she crawling through this room but not able to interact with it? Well, it's because there was a hole. She had to roll through the hole. That's all. That's all she could have done. I don't know. I, I just think it's a really cool um, cinematic device. You know, like look at this. It's just cool. It really, just makes these opening moments just feel way more cinematic. It's like starting a movie. You're happening upon this scene, and you get to. I don't know. I, I know. I keep saying it. You get to kind of <laughs> watch it play. I just think it's cool. What are they doing back there? What is that? They are wheeling something into that room, presumably to uh, protect it from the space pirates. It seems to be some little, you know, there's a little, a little like hollow pad kind of thing. You have this uh, thing 
device, relic, something or other. And it looks like it was being worked on. You have these like little doodads here, and yet they are wheeling it away. That is interesting. I wonder what that is. Then you get this cool like little attack pod thing. Crashes through the ceiling, and space pirates come out and start getting up to space piratey stuff. Real mean. Real mean. These guys right here, they're they're mean. They're a mean bunch. I don't know if you've played these games, but they're 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 nasty. Really up to no good, for the most part, you know? <laughs> Probably making a real mean noise, yelling something in space pirate language. Thankfully, not translated. I'm sure it's quite rude. Uh, fortunately, Samus seems to be right here to, uh, you know, kill him. To blast him with her gun and murder him, make him stop living. Thank goodness. These rude mean guys hey someone's helping her there there must be um other federation people here kind of helping her out because yeah we got, we got some uh someone else seems to be helping helping shoot the bad guys the rude bad guys that's good nice little uh charge attack for the flourish see the terror in his beady little bug-like eyes as he contemplates the end of his existence <laughs> gets off a few last couple shots just out of pure animalistic desperation the camera turns and yet i am not seeing who was firing those shots unless it was like a turret or something is it that is there something who is shooting he's well he's kind of shooting over here so maybe is there someone over here is that it is there a person over there is there a federation person over there and uh and there it is that's uh that's his life uh exterminated you know, we all we all get one one run at it, and uh, that was that that guy. It's it's over. So now we get another guy. This guy's uh, about to get a missile. In, if you watch closely, you can follow the trajectory of the missile, make, making its way to this guy's physical body, and you can also notice the moment when his life is exterminated. I believe it's it's here. Somewhere in one of these frames. I'm going to need to ask the Metroid community for a deeper analysis, but I think one of one of these five or six frames marks the end of uh, his life. Not sure if he maybe has a brief dying brain experience or if he just goes straight straight into not being. I'm not sure, but then we got another shot here. And, uh, and this is pretty cool. A nice little cinematic shot. There's an explosion. What do you do with an explosion? You roll heroically away from it to make sure that you... Oh, make sure you don't get hit by that thing. That thing over that rude piece of, uh, of debris there. And then uh, we, we get a little... We get, oh, that's cool. We're in like a kind of a cool little like dome room. Some kind of space plane over here. Then we get a visit from, from someone else who's also very rude. Uh, very mean cool smoke effect i think it's very just like billowy whole lot going on here very cool very cinematic we get the space pirates they're kind of moving out of the way and uh yep it's him that's uh that is silux a character introduced in metroid prime hunters and uh pretty much this entire time it has been hinted that he would be part of the next game in whatever form that it took uh, you know, it's kind of a little teasery thing in Metroid Prime 3, and then even at the end of Federation Force, uh, I, I guess there was a little teasy thing at the end where he's shown stealing a Metroid egg, which makes sense because now he's showing up with a Metroid. Some people were saying that they look more like the Mocktroids, the uh, poorly cloned Metroids from Super. I don't know if maybe that's the case or not, uh, but we know that space pirates really do like cloning Metroids. And um, I do think it is interesting. I don't want to go all the way into the lore and and whatnot now, but it is interesting that we have the space pirates. They are very mean, mean, <laughs> very rude, and uh, they like to kill and hurt Samus and whatnot. Their original leader was uh, Mother Brain, and then in, in the other Prime games, Ridley seems to have a big a big say in things too. And then of course, Dark Samus kind of kind of jumps in, sort of becomes their new leader. And so it is funny to see that they are they just latching on to anybody who's cool enough 
Do they really, like, they, they're very ruthless, but do they just really not like working independently? Or have they, is this a partnership with Silex? They seem to be serving him. I don't know how, did he just come in and was like, hey, I got some Metroids. Let me be your king and I'll give you some Metroids. I really don't know. Um, I will say that they look really cool. The space pirates are looking pretty neat. And then um, these Metroids look so, oh my gosh. Oh, the graphics, the graphics. Look at the really fantastic detail in these Metroids here. Oh, there's like a ripple on the outer skin and the, 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 the membrane and the way that the light filters through it. It's kind of like, oh, oh, that's very, very cool. You get a cool close-up shot of Silex and just this cool, like, I don't even, what is, what is this? What does this do? How does this benefit him? Having this little, this little light thing that kind of, just kind of lights up. What is that? Is that him getting an idea? <laughs> is that whatever, whatever race he is, is that what happens instead of a light bulb over the head? He sees Samus and he's like, whoa, you know, it's kind of like his exclamation point. He's like, whoa, hey, oh my gosh, Samus. Whoa, I haven't seen you in a long time. I haven't seen you since the events of Hunters. Um, Obviously, his armor is looking really cool. And this was a big thing in Metroid Dread, too. And th those cutscenes look so good. And just, they've got just the the way the metal shines and all the little, little tiny imperfections and details. It looks, oh, it looks positively fantastic. You know, people have been getting on my case because I keep saying that a Switch graphically is more like a PS3 or an Xbox 360 when it's actually a good step above that. And I think that, I think Metroid games in particular are really great at showing that off. Graphics are just so good. So very cool shot. Re I mean, I really genuinely just like this. This is the most realistically and coolly depicted Metroids we have ever seen, whether they are Metroids or mock droids. Um, so yeah, Silex. Silex is in the game. That's a thing. And then we get an equally cool oh, this the thing with the with the mesh. You see the oh the the little the reflection there. It's too much. Oh, it's too much cool. Oh, I love it. She ain't surprised. She ain't surprised to see him. Nothing surprises Samus. She's just ready for a fight. Let's fight. Let's fight right now. So then we get our logo and we get our title. And uh, I have heard people say that this uh, this kind of thing possibly resembles something about a, a matter getting sucked into an event horizon or, or something like that. Uh, maybe there may be some black holes that kind of look like this. I'm not sure. I should know. I love space. I'm particularly interested in black holes. Um... There'll be plenty of time to look into that later. And then the title Beyond, which does make me wonder if this is going to be some kind of, you know, some access to another universe, to another galaxy. They're going to be some kind of portal, some black hole fanciness going on, kind of integrated into the story. Maybe this is a, if the first three games were all about Phazon, maybe this is something, yeah, accessing some other reality, perhaps something like that. I don't know. Uh, and then we get what is probably my favorite shot of the entire thing. You know, in here, we're in the, we're in the, the space station. It's pirates. It's shooty. It's, it's kaboom boom. But then we get, oh, this is the Metroid stuff right here. This is the Metroid stuff. Walking around in cool, overgrown places. Weird wildlife. Just weird animals I'm going to kill a bunch of. Just innocent animals I'm just going to destroy. I'm going to wipe them out by the thousands. Get this beautiful place. And in, in the most just wonderful, wonderful shot here. And again, YouTube isn't doing it any favors, but looking at it up close, it does seem a little bit more obvious that it is running on a Switch. Because, you know, if you look at the finer details, there's not like a ton of fidelity there. But it's the overall, like, artistic vision and the, the, you know, the lighting tricks and whatnot that make it really, really shine. Um, so this is cool. Obviously, we're going to be, we're going to be running around here. Um, just the nature, the wildlife, the hugeness, the vines. It's just such my thing. Really, though, I'm just, I'm going to kill these. I'm going to shoot them. They're going to die. They're going to give me health pickups, and it's going to be cool. Um, some kind of cool little cave tree thing there we got a waterfall let's go a little bit faster going over here and then the the real exciting part Th this is where this is where i oh oh, blah, 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 oh there they are there's the goosebumps oh it's happening this this is exciting right here for a great number of reasons 
I love places in games. I love cool environments. I love just like giant trees. That's just a giant tree. That's just kind of my thing. You know, if you boil everything that I love about like fantasy and sci-fi down to one thing, just give me a giant tree. Give me a giant tree and I can look up and it just towers in the distance, you know, like your Elden Ring kind of thing. I'm happy. As long as there's a giant tree, I can see it anytime. And I can imagine maybe even going there. Then that's cool. And then we over, over here, looks like a bridge. I don't know if we go through this, uh, this tunnel over here. Uh, and eventually that kind of comes over. Leads to this bridge. I'm not sure, but I am getting a very big sense of scope here. And that's very cool. It's going to be a modern Metroid Prime game. You want it to have a pretty big scope. You don't want it to just feel like the same Prime again, but with, you know, kind of fancier graphics or maybe a new gimmick or two or something. You want it to feel big. And this shot right here communicates to me bigness. To me, this is the kind of the kind of trailer shot that you show the audience if you want to show them like, hey, this is going to be cool. <laughs> this is going to be... This is gonna be a thing. I don't know if it's gonna be open world or whatever, like rumors have said. I don't think any of those rumors are actually based on anything real. I think that's just what you do when there's a new game coming and you haven't gotten a game for a while. I bet it's gonna be open world. I, I doubt it, but I could see a largeness. I could see a bit more of an openness. I, I, I talked about this in the stream. I, I would love it if it was a little bit more, um, kind of like how Origami King did like what that did for the Paper Mario world, where it just kind of took some of these areas and kind of blew them up a little bit and made traversal within those areas a little bit more open, a little more uh, exploration. I could see something like that. And uh, one person was speculating, what if this is the return of Samus getting the speed booster? You know, not just in Morph Ball mode, but like running, to so run across these big distances. I thought that was a really cool idea. And so this so this image right here is just going to live. Uh, it's in my mind. It's going to... It's going to be there whenever I uh, close my eyes for the next however long until until the game uh, comes out sometime in 2025, I suppose. Not a holiday title, but oh well. Um, and then that's that. That's the trailer. That's, that's it right there. If we want to just kind of let it run, let it run for a, for a minute here while we uh, just kind of take it all in one more time. Uh, it's fantastic. It's really amazingly fantastic. It, it all looks really incredible. This trailer gives just enough away. It shows just enough to get me thinking, to get me pondering, to get me, I don't know, slobbering. <laughs> but doesn't really give too much away. There's still so much for them to show us, you know? Like, really what the story is going to be about. Uh, any major... I'm sure there is going to be at least one major new gameplay mechanic, you know, the the second game introduced the light world, dark world kind of thing. The third game introduced the whole, like, the Phazon injection system. And here, we just have no idea what it's going to be. Uh, but I'm sure it's going to be cool. Because the game looks amazing. It looks simply amazing. It's running on Switch. It looks super duper beautiful. Still very slightly disappointed. It's going to be on Switch, because, you know, I don't want it to be held back by Switch. You know, I I liked the idea that it was going to end up being a big Switch 2 game. But you know what? That's cool. Retro Studios, they're so good. They're so good at what they do. The first Prime games looked so good. They almost looked next-gen at the time. You take this, you run it at a higher resolution on the Switch 2, it's going to be like, there you go. Next-gen Metroid Prime. <laughs> There it is. It already looks that good. Oh, and there it is. One last time. Oh, I just... The shivers. I, I got goosebumps on my goosebumps. That's so good. That's so good. So there you go. That's that. That's, that's, that's my frame by frame for whatever it's worth. I better, um go i stop doing this that's what i should that's what i should do yeah i'm gonna stop i'm gonna stop now metroid prime 4 metroid prime 4 metroid prime 4 there's a trailer for metroid prime 4